and then furthermore, you know, you've seen Star Trek and whatnot. Beam me up, Scotty. Beam me up, Scotty. So it all seems sort of, oh, well, uh, you know, what does that really mean? But you've got to really stop and think about what that means, that it's the same object and it's in two places at once. And people tinker in the lab and they get angry about things and they have lunch and they go home and they lead their lives just as though nothing utterly astounding is happening because, of course, that's how you have to go about it. And yet there is this completely amazing magic sitting right in front of your eyes. simple black boxes like this. Uh, inside is a very simple electric circuit with a few diodes, um, oscillator, EEPROM, some resistors and capacitors. Basically that's it. We wrap one in aluminum foil, we put it in an electrically grounded Faraday cage. The other we set on a tabletop around which four very well qualified meditators, highly inner self-managed individuals sit. And they go into a deep meditative state, they cleanse the environment, they make it essentially a sacred space using their mind cleansing procedures and their intentions, and then one of the four speaks the specific intention for this device. The intention is to influence a particular target experiment. Um, might be the to increase the pH of purified water by one full pH unit, or to decrease the pH by one full pH unit. We've used these devices on all those experiments and have been robustly successful. In the meditative process, then after one speaks the particular intention, it's held various ways by the four for maybe 15 minutes, and then so be it, it's let go. And then a subsidiary intention is stated to seal that imprint into the device. We take one of these devices with its aluminum foil, we put it in a soft package, we put it in a FedEx packet, we ship it 2,000 miles away to the laboratory we were using up in uh, Minnesota, and as soon as it arrives there, it goes into its own electrically round Faraday cage. The next day we do the same with the control. The experiment is running, and basically then one just takes the device out, sets it beside the experiment within six inches to a foot, and turns it on for a period of time. That's it. Now, we learned over some period of time that there was another factor. We found that the use of these, we call them intention imprinted electrical devices, the continued use of this somehow conditions the space to some higher level of symmetry. And we start getting new phenomena. That is the devices work. That is the pH, which is normal, starts rising one full pH unit, if that was the imprint, or starts dropping. If you go one full pH unit or beyond, you're dead. I mean, that's what it means to a human. REG machines, random event generators, are electronic tosses of the coin. One type of random number generator experiment that's been conducted many, many times, hundreds of times, over the past four decades or so, since around the 1960s, has been a random generator that only produces sequences of random bits, zeros and ones, like, like flipping coins. And you would simply ask somebody to press a button, it would produce 200 bits. And you would ask them to say, well, try to make it produce more one bits than zero bits. And when you take the entire body of, of literature, all of the hundreds of experiments that have been done, you can ask a single question. Did it matter that people were trying to push it towards ones or push it towards zeros? And the overall answer is, yes, it does matter. That somehow intention is correlated with the operation, with the output of these random number generators. Such that if you wish for more ones, somehow the generators produce more ones. 
So when they talk about in quantum physics being a completely arbitrary and random process, what they're not accounting for is the extraordinary effect of human thought, of human intention. When the O.J. Simpson trial was going on, uh, lots of people are watching television because of the courtroom drama that was unfolding. And uh, Radden uh, intuited that there must be a lot of intention going on at the time when the courtroom drama is strong. So he hired a bunch of psychologists who kept track of the courtroom drama. At the same time, uh, Radden was studying the behavior of random number generators. But then uh, Radden found that whenever the intentions were strong in the courtroom, that's when the deviation of these random number generators from randomness becomes very high. This leads naturally to wonder, do people, are people affecting the world of reality that they see? You betcha they are. Every single one of us affects the reality that we see, even if we try to hide from that and play victim. We all are doing it. Just tell me where you are. Okay, good. But hurry, will you please, because these models are giving me a headache. structure of water and what affects it. Now water is the most receptive of the four elements. Mr. Emoto thought perhaps it would respond to non-physical events. So he set up a series of studies, applied mental stimuli and photographed it with a microscope. For one sample of water, we drop about 0.5 cc's onto each 50 petri dishes. Then we take those 50 petri dishes and freeze them in a freezer at minus 25 degrees Celsius for about three hours. We take those frozen samples into a refrigerator that is set at minus five degrees Celsius where a microscope with a camera is set up. There we take photographs of each of the 50 water drops individually. We first take photographs of water that we did not put any information in. Then we take the water with information and do the same procedure just described. We take those before and after photographs and compare the differences. When we projected the feeling of love and thanks to water, they made the most beautiful crystal. At times like this, I think water is at peace. This first picture is a picture of water from the Fujiwara Dam. And this picture is the same water after receiving a blessing from a Zen Buddhist monk. Now in this next series of pictures, Mr. Emoto printed out words, taped them to bottles of distilled water, and left them out overnight. This first photograph is a picture of the pure distilled water, just the essence of itself. These subsequent photographs, as you can see, are each different. This is the Chi of Love. And we move along here to thank you. And you can see where he taped that uh, to this bottle here. But if you read Japanese, you already knew that. <laughs> now, Mr. Emoto speaks of the thought or intent being the driving force in all of this. The science of how that actually affects the molecules is unknown, except to the water molecules, of course. And it's really fascinating when you keep in mind 
that 90% of our bodies are water.